Yeah. And now a review of Tower of Madness. Tower of Madness was designed by Kurt Covert and published by his own company, Smirk and Dagger Games. Features art by E.J. Delacruz, Jen Santos, and Brian Valenza. It was originally published in 2018, though I do remember seeing it at Origins in 2017. They're really showing it off, but I guess it was officially released in 2018. Now, for anyone out there who hasn't watched your unboxing video, how about you tell us what's in the box? All right. First off, though, go watch that unboxing video. Seriously, if you haven't, uh, Deanna, it's her favorite video that I've ever recorded. Uh, just fast forward to about 15 minute mark or so and watch the part about sticky dice to see why it's her favorite. I mean, just the fact that we're talking about sticky dice right here says something. What? I'm yeah. not sure, but it says something. Yeah, uh, we'll get back to those dice in a moment. So first thing you're going to find in the box, it's a long box. It's a little minor complaint. This is not easy to stock on your shelf. This isn't going to fit in your Calyx. Uh, I guess it has to be this size because of the tower size. But it's one I, I hate. I don't know. I, I wish the board game industry would come up with a few standard box sizes and stick to it. I'm not going to really blame Smirk and Dagger for that, though. But you open up the box, you find the rules. Uh, it's only seven pages. Uh, but man, there is a lot of text. It's almost wall of text. There are a good number of examples. But just uh, the rules are very exception based. So it's like you do this, except when this happens. And you do this, except when this card happens. Uh, they're clear enough. They're clear enough overall. But we did find ourselves referencing the rules quite a bit, like for the first two to three games. Like it was a wait, how's this work? Or wait, how does that happen? Now, what I would like to have seen is some kind of summary, too. So we wouldn't have to flip through the rule book because there's spell cards. There's um, the investigator card powers. Then there's all of the, I forget what they're called, and I know it's later in the notes, but the, the cards you get if you roll two oak branches, I forget what they're called. But um, I would have liked to have seen those. Unnatural influence tiles, that's what it is. Uh, it, it would, and even the marble colors. Just give me one sheet. Like, like just the back of the rule book would have worked. Make it eight pages and just give me a summary. Um, other complaint is my rule book came bent. It was actually tucked into the side of the box, tucked between the side of the box and the insert which was a bit disappointing. Of course, doesn't affect gameplay, but just when you get a new game, I, I want, you know. Yeah. Now, it's not may not be a huge deal to casual players, but it's a major faux pas for collectors, and it can impact the readability as well. In this case, I don't, I don't think it really got in the way. It just personally, like, I, I guess I'm enough of a collector. Yeah. I didn't buy a Ding and Dent copy. I was just like, oh, that sucks. Uh, next is a bag full of tentacles. Uh, these are nice green plastic. It seems it, it's slightly flexible. doesn't seem like they're too fragile. It doesn't seem like they're going to break easily. Definitely not going to break just like using them appropriately. Probably not going to break if you whack your friends with them. Now, if I recall, there was one missing, but they quickly replaced it for you. Yeah, there was. Um, I didn't realize this till the end of the unboxing. I tried to put everything together. I freaked out for a bit thinking I misplaced it while I was doing the unboxing because I did take a tentacle out and wave it at the camera. Rewatched my own unboxing video to confirm. No, I put it back in the box. Uh, no, there was, uh, but there was one missing, which in this style of game, to me meant the game was unplayable. I literally did not want to play it until I had the tentacle because while well, the tentacles hold the marbles in and it's for plunk, right? Like taking one out does affect how things are going to fall. Um, they did do a, a great job. Like I contacted Kurt Colvert, uh, who's really good, uh, especially on Twitter, like great social media presence, really easy to get a hold of. They did quickly replace it. Well, quickly enough, shipping to Canada sucks sometimes. But yeah, I did get a replacement copy at no cost to me. Um, I didn't mention the rule book. I probably could have got a replacement rule book at the same time. Uh, next is the tower itself and like uh, the roof, the topper. Uh, I got to say this thing's nice, like really nice. Uh, it's it's a nice thick piece with like folding so it folds flat. It's got some nice tower artwork on it. Uh, the holes for the tentacles are color coded to show you how to put the the tentacles in. And the one thing like I, I don't know how I missed it in the unboxing video because I, I even see it when watching it is it's magnetic, which is fantastic. Like you just fold it out and it snaps together. Now I have no idea in twenty years or ten years from now if that magnet's gonna hold up, but right now it's great. Like. There's, there's no, you know, insert tab A or anything here. You just hold this thing together and snap. There you go. And the roof is a little more fiddly. Um, I actually fumbled with it quite a bit before I noticed online it's also magnetic, and I just hadn't put the pieces in the right way to get them to attract. Uh, but, oh, man, you can get that tower without the tentacles in it set up in seconds. 
Yeah, it's unfortunate that uh, things like gizmos weren't assembled with magnets and yeah. could avoid some of the problems we had with that uh, that build. Totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah, much better like component quality. I got to say, it beats out Potion Explosion and Gizmos and um, Secret of Monte Cristo being other games with you know fancy components like this. Right. Uh, under the tower itself is the base for it. This is a nice, hefty chunk of black plastic. Tower fits snugly on it. it, um, it it's not WYSIWYG. Like, you could technically assemble it the wrong way, but it just means it's turned the wrong way. Uh, the sculpting's nice. It's got, like, elder signs and archaic stuff, and there's some little spots to put green marbles when they come out. I have nothing to complain about here. One thing I thought they might have done is I talk about how much I love Shogun and Wallenstein. And one of the things they did in that game is they made the 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 base of the tower clear so all the players could see it. That might have been an, a, a valid choice here so you could see it from across the board, but really it's not that big a deal because once the marbles fall, you tend to pull them all out anyway. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's a, you know, this is one of those games, we talk about table presence with games. This game has got it in spades. It it looks great. Uh, you know, it's easy to assemble. It's something you want to have out at a game night. In, uh, yeah. for, that, for that purpose alone, it's going to pull people in. Yeah, it's great. Uh, under the base is a bunch of baggies with counters and tokens. What was cool is they're pre-punched. Uh, tokens are nice and thick. Uh, there's some player boards. Those came like wrapped in cardboard. Uh, they're the same nice thickness, and they're also already punched out, so that's a bonus. Uh, the player boards kind of look like, like a two-layer player board that would hold everything in place, but it's just one layer, so the table ass is the bottom. Like, it's all notches to hold everything, so that's cool. Holds the marbles well. At that, They're well designed. Yeah, I haven't seen uh, too many marbles shooting around and when this was yeah. getting played. Now, next is the marbles. Uh, these are literal marbles. This isn't like Gizmo's little plastic round things. These are cat's eye style marbles in white, blue, red, and green, and yellow. Um, way more white, red, and blue. Uh, only one yellow, three green. Uh, these are the marbles I grew up with. Like, these, they're marbles. You want to go out in the playground and shoot some marbles afterwards? <laughs> you can. Yeah, no, I don't know. What do you call the big one? No shooter? No shooter. No, no shooter. Um, there's a set of location cards. Uh, these are square cards. They've got nice Cthulhu-looking landscape art. There are some text and icons on them that's nice and clear, large text. You can see it from across the table. Uh, the points they're worth is especially large, so that's cool. Uh, there's one more deck of cards that has character cards and spell cards. Uh, the spell cards are notable because they're like divided in half, and half of it is written upside down because you read the card one way if you're sane and the other way if you're insane. No complaints here. Yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, they've, they've really put a lot of effort into making this game nice on the table. Then we get to the sticky dice. Yes, sticky. The dice that came in my copy of Tower of Madness were stuck together by some unknown substance. Like, if you watch the video, you can see me pull them out and then hold them by one die as they sit there vertically hanging in space. Um, they did come apart easily enough, with, but they were coated in something. Uh, something sticky enough that, like, you could touch it with a finger and pick up a die. It, I, it was gross. It, it is was um this one i complained about this this was this was enough that i was like ew and i went online i was like ew and kurt got a hold of me and was like oh yeah this is a known manufacturing issue just clean them with soap and water and clean it off i i gotta say it took a lot of soap and water um i did it at home brought the game out while we were playing one of the players was like these are still a little tacky so i brought them in the washroom and washed them again and then we were still playing and they were still a little tacky. So then I let them soak while we played another game. Uh, they're, they're, they seem to be clean now. So, so wrong. So yeah. very, very wrong. Yeah, uh, yeah, I wasn't actually expecting my sanity to be tested while unboxing a game. Uh, now, all this stuff is in a nice solid black plastic vacuum, whatever you call it, not vacuum seal, whatever that's. How you inject and it's not inject and molding, whatever that plastic, how you make plastic inserts. Uh, it does a great job of holding all the components, everything fits back into the box great. The tower unfolds great. Um, game will store vertically or horizontally. You're going to get a lot of rattling noise as you move the marbles around, but it, other than that, it works great. Overall, uh, just based on the unboxing, I think Kurtz, American Dagger, they need to have some words with their manufacturer. Like, come on. A bent rule book is annoying. That's that's kind of annoying. I, I guess that's okay, but like, yeah, it sucks. Sticky dice though, that's just gross. 
And then the fact I didn't even have a complete game, I was missing a tentacle. So now I have an unplayable game with sticky dice and a bent rule book. I, by the time I had this done unboxing, I was pretty disenchanted with the game before even playing it. Well, now that we know what you get and how to clean it off, <laughs> how do you play? Well, first thing you got to do when you play Tower of Madness is build the tower. Uh, this is not fun. Uh, unlike Kerplunk, where you just shove the, the things in anywhere because it's just a big round dome thing and other people can help you, there are specific holes you have to fill on each side of the tower. And like that still doesn't sound bad until you try to do it and can't get them through. I got to admit, the first couple times it took me forever. And then I learned the trick of looking through the top to see what you were doing. So that got a little easier. But that only works for some of the sides because then you can't really load the bottom while you're looking from the top. Um, it's just not fast. Like it it takes a long time to to put these tentacles in this tower. Yeah, you know, this again, people people talk about this and and, and we'll talk a little more later about the whole Kerplunk comparison, um, which is wrong in a number of ways, and unfortunately setting up is one of those ways. Yeah. Now, once you actually start playing, you're going to select an investigator. You seed a location deck based on the number of players and throw the clock tower location on top. On your turn, you roll the hopefully no longer sticky dice. Uh, you then look at your dice and you have to choose one, at least one of those dice to lock on your player board. The player board has spots for five dice. Um, there are three specific ones that are looking for a gate symbol, a heart symbol, and a mind symbol. And the other two spots can be filled with any dice. So you're going to roll your dice, you're going to slot at least one, you're going to roll your dice again, try to slot another. You keep doing that until you either can't slot something and you fail, or you've slotted all five dice and you've conceded, you've succeeded at your investigation. So to succeed, you're going to need a heart, a mind, and a gate, and then your other two dice, you're just going to look at the numbers on them. So they're like standard D6 that way that they have one to six on them. The score you get for succeeding in the investigation is based on those two dice. Now, if you fail to slot all your dice, something horrible happens, and that's when you pull a tentacle from the tower. After you're done your turn, whether you succeed or fail, it goes to the next player, they do the same thing, they roll the dice, or they pull a tentacle, you go around the whole board, then you look at those investigation scores, those two dice for the players who succeeded. Whoever has the highest score gets the location card, which is worth points. So, so it's, it, it's really not Kerplunk at all. No. <laughs> this is you know again you look at this game and you see kerplunk but Not at all the game doesn't involve the tower <laughs> not really it's 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 there it's a thing yeah so you keep playing until all the locations are gone or three green marbles have fallen from the tower if three green marbles come out you lose the game now about the tentacles when you're pulling tentacles there's a chance some marbles will fall now this isn't a bad thing and actually, early in the game, you want marbles to fall on your turn. And depending on the color of the marbles that fall out depends on what they do. So green marbles are terrible. I mentioned those. You get three of those, the entire group loses the game. That is, unless the person that causes the last one to fall out happens to be insane, then they win. Like I said, the rules are very exception-based. It's this way, except when. So in that case, the, the, the insane person wins. Hasn't happened in a single game we played. Blue marbles, when they come out, are discovery marbles. They're just worth three points each, so they're good. And those are like one-third of the marbles in the tower. White marbles are just as good. They give you spells. Spells are cards that let you break the rules. Uh, typical of Spurk and Dagger games, these are very take that. It's make someone draw an extra tentacle, re-roll someone else's dice, change the number on a die. Um, and they depend on if your investigator is sane or insane, what you do with them. Now, red marbles are the bad ones that aren't the green ones. They represent insanity. If you ever get four red marbles, your character becomes insane. You now use the insane side of the spell cards, and on your turn, instead of rolling the dice, you just pull tentacles, hoping to end the game by dropping that last green marble. Now, added to that, there's a bunch of little special rules. Again, there's a lot of exception-based playing here, where each location is going to have some rules which will say, oh, when you roll these symbols, this happens, or plays played in reverse order or something. Uh, the spells all change things. The investigators, if you're playing with the advanced rules, have special powers that are unique to each one, making the game asymmetric. I strongly recommend if you're gamers to start with that. Um, the other thing, though, are if you roll two fives, which are these Elder Oak symbols, you get to take an unnatural influence token, which is another way where you can spend these tokens to break the rules. And again, it's like re-roll the dice, cancel another player's spell, and so on. 
If players manage to get to the bottom of the location deck, the same investigator with the most points wins. If they don't, everyone loses. Yep. It's, uh, so far, people who looked at this box keep saying Cthulhu Kerplunk. Uh, and it, you know, again, it really looks that way. The, there's so much of, about it that looks like a, a simple Kerplunk game, and it's just not. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, between the dice and the marbles, uh, as Anti Games is pointing out, the randomness on this game is really high. It is. It is. Now, that's what you expect from Smirk and Dagger, but I don't know. Uh, so the first thing I got to say, I am really happy. It's not just Cthulhu, Kerplunk. I, I actually thought when I saw this game, it was literally going to be on your turn, pull a tentacle, marbles fall out, see what happens. That's what I thought it was going to be. And I'm glad it's not. That's not it. It's not just every turn, pull a tentacle and see what happens. There is a actually rather solid push your luck dice game here hiding behind the gimmicky tower that catches everyone's attention. Like, this dice game's quite fun and can be very tense. You're like, oh, I just, am I, am I going to get a six or am I going to get my mind? I got to get the mind. Or do I lock this or do I know what I, like, if you roll two sixes on your first turn, you really want to lock those to try to get the 12 points, but you're greatly reducing your chance of getting the three symbols you need to succeed. Like, it's a really tense game. Like, it's better than some recent dice games we've reviewed without mentioning any games. I would go so far to say that this dice mechanic is probably clever enough to have been its own game. They probably could have done a pusher luck dice Cthulhu game just with that mechanic. The problem, though, is that doing well at this pusher luck game means you don't get to do the thing that's supposed to be fun about Tower of Madness. You don't get to play with the tower. Like, that's, that's what draws everyone to this game is this gimmicky tower, right? If you're playing well, you roll the dice... And mark your score and then pass it on and hope someone doesn't roll better than you. When someone fails, all of a sudden they're having all this fun and they're pulling tentacles and everyone's looking at the marbles. Meanwhile, you're sitting back going, well, I got a 12 score. I'm awesome. I, not only that, but pulling things from the tower is definitely more fun than just rolling the dice. But then there's the fact that most of the, the, the marbles are good, right? So... Not only is it more fun to pull from the tentacle, you're going to get points from pulling the tentacle, and it's a great way to get points on your own. So basically in this game, you're punished for succeeded, succeeding and rewarded for failing. Yep. Then, then there's the physics of the tower. So you can't play this game cautiously. Well, you can, but if you do, you're playing it wrong. If you actually play this like Kerplunk, where you're trying to make it so marbles don't fall, so you're only pulling those top tentacles, and maybe at the very beginning, you pull a bunch from the very bottom because you know there's no marble sitting on them yet. You're actually playing wrong. You're going to have nothing fall. But most of the marbles are good, right? So you want. So you want to try to make sure they fall. The other thing, though, is this is the, the grid this makes is not as stable as the, the Kerplunk grid of sticks through there. And I find once one marble falls, you tend to get a deluge. You don't get just two or three you'll tend to get a ton. And then when a ton come out, it's almost always you get all three of the green ones come out and the game ends. Yep. Uh, and in the chat room, Mage Kayla was pointing out uh, she pulled two tentacles and got three green marbles and, uh, you know, right away, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and that's it. And it's game over. Game over. Oh, we all lost. Yep. Like, like, I have had really mixed results with this game. Most gamers I play with, like, like people who like Euros, people like heavy games, they enjoy the dice mechanic. And they like trying to gather the location cards and, and using the mechanics on the investigation and using the spells to get more dice, but then are way too cautious when it comes from pulling from the tower. They're just like, no, no, I don't want to ruin my score. I don't want to go insane. I got my thing going on. Now, non-gamers are completely the opposite. They have a hard time grasping the push your luck aspect. Like, I have had to explain the rules multiple times. Look, no, no, you need a heart. No, no, you need a mind. Why do I want to keep these dice? We well, want to keep them for this. Wait, you roll two fives. What happens? Like they kind of get lost in it, but they have a ton of fun pulling things from the tower. Right. But then they don't tend to use their spell cards well, and they don't do well on their dice. They don't, they don't play the, the odds very well and tend to not win. Right. Cause they're too busy things. Now the most success I've had is actually with a mix because it kind of balances each other out, right? Where the, the people playing the, the dice game are doing their thing and the people playing the tower game are doing their thing and it kind of balances the game out and it, and it works out okay. The problem is if you play to win, you don't have the fun part. You're, you're, you're doing probabilities in your head and 
pushing your like in a dice game and trying to score the points and you don't do the fun thing. And like, you get this awesome feeling where you're like, I got all my thing. I rolled a Yahtzee. I rolled a one, two, three, and two sixes is the best thing you can possibly roll with this game. That should be a moment where everyone's high-fiving each other, right? That should be a, yay, I win. Instead, it's like, yeah, I got 12. It's your turn. Like, my turn's just done. It, like, it, it just, it's boring. Yep. Now, I got to admit, overall, I, I, I'm, it's cool that Tower of Madness is more of a game than I thought it would be. Like, I am, I'm honestly glad it's not just C Cthulhu Cup of Fun. But, like, it's a game that's at cross-purposes with itself. Like, it's, it's like it's fighting itself. It, it doesn't, the, the mechanics don't match the fun. I do this, I personally can't suggest anyone rush out and pick this game up. I, to me, this is a very much a try before you buy. Now, I have met people who love it. There are, there are people in our local gaming group that have had a great time with this game. There are definitely people out there I've seen online that enjoy the game, and there are people out there that are going to like this. I just wasn't one of them. In the end, I think I either wanted a sillier, lighthearted game, like a beer and pretzels, lots of take that and laughing and playing powers on each other and making someone have to pull three times and skipping turns, more of like almost a rhino hero kind of take that game. Or I wanted something more in depth, where if you fail uh, the push your life, luck dice thing, that you're actually getting punished by pulling. Like, you don't want to pull from the tower. You don't want marbles to fall. And I find Tower of Madness isn't at either of those extremes, and it's kind of in the middle. And for me, it fell pretty flat in the middle. Yeah, and I think part of the part of the problem with this game is expectations. Um, I, I suspect that a lot of the people who have really enjoyed this game at the club have no idea what they're doing, and they just sit down and play. And they didn't pay for it. Uh, yes. You know, it's you know, it's not their game. They don't have any buy-in, uh, so they can just sit and have fun with it for what it is. Uh, whereas I think if you've invested in this game, if you put in time, if you or if you if you've thought too much about it or all, <laughs> at all about it, um, then you're not going to get what you thought about and what you wanted necessarily. Uh, I it's a great game. I think this is a sort of game where every FLGS should have a copy that they can yeah. put out at game night. Um, but no, I, there, I, there aren't that many people I can think of who I would suggest buy this game. Um, now I suspect there's probably house ruling that could be done and that could yep. create a better game out of this, but how many people buy a game so you can house rule it? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's other. I'll admit while playing them, Sebastian, a local gamer, had a ton of suggestions on how to improve this game. Oh, absolutely. Because he was very disappointed in it in the way that, like, I don't know what he was expecting. I actually don't know which side of the, if he expected <laughs> Cthulhu or Punk or Elder Sign with a tower. with like As the two extremes, I don't know what he expected, but, man, he was, he just you could tell he was frustrated by the game while playing it. And he's just, but if just you did this, or if just you did that, or if just, he's like, and, he, and one of his thoughts was, no matter what, you pull a tentacle on your turn. That was if that's you my fail, first you thought. Pull three or yeah. something, right? You that, pull two. That's my first thought. Is or you if have you to succeed, pull tentacles. if you succeed, you pull a tentacle but ignore reds. Yeah, right or something, right? So you can yeah. still get spells and discovery points. Like and and Sebastian was coming up with all these ways. And personally, I, my opinion was put the game away and go, let's go play something more fun. Yeah. Right? I, I I'm like I don't feel the need to fix this game. Like I said I don't want to bash it too much. The, there are people who loved it. It definitely was not for me. And and and, and like I said I don't even know what I would have preferred. I think I would have preferred a Go Cuckoo, a sillier dexterity based. Because that's the other thing, too, with this compared to compared to Plunk, because you can't see the marbles. Right. Your Plunk has more strategy in your poles because you can see what's resting on what. Right. It's a it's a clear tower. This is not. So you have no clue when you're pulling a marble if something's going to fall or not. Yeah. Where even if it had a clear tower, at least maybe then you could be like, ooh, there's a green there. And if I'm the insane player, I can try to make that fall. I don't know. Again, yeah. I'm trying to fix a game that uh, yeah. at this point. I'll now, push we should also mention, uh, not included in the rule book are suggestions on how to load the tower that were given yes. to you by the game designer. And that's concerning. If he has, you know, tips and tricks on how you can better load the tower, um, yeah. those should be in the game. Those shouldn't be oh, something passed around between friends. So that's maybe something that he realized once the game was released. So, like, we have talked about this on the show, Kurt. As I said, is very good at social media. Noticed us talking about it. Uh, read my some of my original thought reviews, 
and did note that one of the best ways is to um, only put half the tentacles in, then put half the marbles in, then put the rest of the tentacles in so that you get a better distribution. One of the things I tried that did not work was putting the three green marbles in last. I kind of thought that would put them at the top, but I, that seemed to make them fall out quicker, something to do with the physics inside the tower. Because that was my thought. Is I'm like, I'm going to seed this so the three green marbles go in last. Right. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's an interesting one. Well, for more in-depth uh, more in-depth look at Tower of Madness, head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Reviews. Yeah, I go into a bit more detail on how to play and the different cards and stuff like that. I didn't want to get into every little symbol on the die. Like, why the Elder Sign matters on the 6th. 